I worked with Matt Long at Lost Coast about 12 and a half years ago. He worked in the lab there, and uh, I was assistant brewer, so Matt and I have been friends for years. And it was just a natural, there he is right now. Um, it was just a natural, eventually, that I wanted to do this with uh, Matt. And uh, the fact that they've come up with this other line at Big Sky, which a lot of people don't know about, which is the Ivan the Terrible and some Belgians that they've done and some wood age beers that they've done that uh, it was just naturally going to happen. Let's well, start with Skagit River Brewery. Brewery for our second anniversary, they uh, surprised us with a bottling, special bottling for us for, uh, to commemorate our second anniversary at Bottleworks. And then we thought that was a pretty cool thing. And the next year, nothing happened. And then uh, Arlen Harris from uh, La Conner Brewery. Well, you missed one, what? which was the monkfish. Well, that was... It was an anniversary. An anniversary. That, was, that was like one of our first beers that oh. we ever did, like private label. That was true. That was before the Skagit or after? That was after the Skagit. After Skagit. Skagit kind of gave us the idea. They were <laughs> the ones that kind of brought it to us and said, you know, we did the special bottling of our, of our barley wine for you. And... Uh, to kind of commemorate your uh, second year in business, and then uh, it kind of took off from there. And then we did a beer with Fish. Arlen Harris did our fourth, and then Arlen Harris did our fourth. Just a dry hop in the bottle, like yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it just you know, it, it seemed like the right thing to do was to, you know, uh, work with brewers, and then you know what it's grown into now is just uh, trying to create styles and try to you know push your imagination farther. Mm -hmm. so, well, hopefully they'll fall right to the rim, man. <laughs> And then we'll just put a bunch more of something in there. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's not something you just go do with any brewery and just blend any combination of beers together. I mean, in the past, we've done just a few blends, really. I mean, mostly it's just about doing a special beer, something that's got legs, it's going to age well, and it'll last for a few years. But uh, And we usually start with, like, how the beer smells. Because, I mean, you can usually tell a good beer by just, just simply how it smells. So we kind of go through what we're, we're tasting and smell, depending on what we're blending. We, brewed a, we blended a beer with uh, Vinny, where all the beers are sour. So really what we were going for is, like, you know, after drinking a whole bunch of sour beers a whole life, that we wanted to go for a certain style. So uh, we were talking, like, Jews or Belgian, and he actually had some Nambic, which is a spontaneously fermented beer that we put in the batch. So... It's different every time, but like this time, it's when you're dealing with light beers, you know, you're kind of just tasting and smelling beers that you would think would complement each other. And basically, it's just, you know, it's, it's... And you still never know until you do it. But then, well, what you always look for a lot of times, and what I've done, it, uh, I, I blended a beer at Lost Abbey, and, uh, you know, to come up with a base beer so you know the direction the beer is going to go is usually a good way to start. Because when, when you're coming up with anywhere from 200 gallons to, you know, like we've done with uh, Vinny, we did like 350 gallons. So uh, a lot of times in breweries, you know, it's cooperage, so what they have around. So if you can come up with like one base beer that you like, then, you know, it's easy to build off from that. And for example, you know, the beer that we came with yesterday were several items have been aged in wine beers. So when we had that flavor profile, we knew that we wanted to stay with that flavor profile. So through the process that you saw yesterday was that, you know, we, we added a bourbon barrel, but then we thought about adding a bourbon, then it was too much bourbon. So then, you know, it's, it's, it's basically just what, you know, you, what you want that beer to be. I think it's important to say to people who don't know about this, though, is that you don't just take the porter and stout and a little pale and we're not just mixing beers up. It's it's either going to be a certain strength of alcohol or it has to be a certain tart acidicness, you know, to the beer. Just as in Lambic, you have the blend, which is the young Lambic and the old Lambic. And the same thing with this is you take, you know, something... In the case with Vinny, there's an older beer and, and a much younger beer, and then a little bit of a dark beer, all of which had wild Britannomyces yeast. Well, they all had different sour tones, so I mean, mm -hmm. something that's been aged longer as a sour beer is going to have more of those that kind of battery acid, sharp, tart flavors. Something younger is going to be a little bit more acidic, you know, it's going to have less of the bite. So, I mean, right. you know, it's, 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 you know, when we walk into a situation, we don't always know what we're going to have, but, you know, with Matt, we had 16 different different beers to choose from, so all we took the time to smell them and taste them all. Six, 10 yeah. to 15 percent range. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is a strong blend. This is just a, a massive ale, you know. Yeah. And then uh, with the beer I just made at Lost Abbey uh, that I blended, uh, I wanted, you know, my my idea was to blend a really dark sour. 
because I've never seen a sour like the color of like a stout. So, I mean, I walked in there with like that idea. Cuvée de Tom. There's the, there's the it's still not as dark as this one, but yeah. But I did use Cuvée de Tommy in that blend. But, you know, the idea was is that, you know, I haven't seen too many really dark, dark sours. So, yeah. you know, picking what's there was, you know, stuff that had been perfectly sour in port barrels, bourbon barrels, uh, you know, uh, rum barrel, you know. So, but it just, you know, the criteria that I wanted was dark. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, there, there's always going to be a handful. A lot yeah. of blend of beers come out of California. Uh, Washington doesn't have much. Oregon doesn't have much. There's only. A, I'd like to see a trend, but you know, it's it, it, it's a it's a gamble. I mean, somebody sure. like Tommy Arthur, who's gotten really good at it, mm -hmm. you know, but still he still gets flack because he just had that beer came out that was uh, the Cuvée de Tommy, which is a blend of different mm -hmm. beers. And it was flat, and he got a whole bunch of flack for it. You know, but I thought it was incredible. You know, it didn't matter that it had carbonation or not. I mean, the fact that he blended something like that. You know, he actually said it's to a certain extent it's kind of ballsy to blend the beer because you're trying to create something that some you know, you're trying to create something out of something that's already been created. Yeah. So, the twelfth is going to be the brewery. The thirteenth is Stone, and the fourteenth is Cascade out of Oregon. So, you so and the Cascade out of Oregon actually. Matt and I need to take a trip up to Portland this year because we're going to pick uh, several barrels for the next three years to blend this beer in basically four years. 